Daniel, will you come and eat your breakfast? All right, all right, dear, in a minute. Daniel! My dear, don't you know it's an unwritten law never to talk while a gentleman is putting? It's also an unwritten law never to putt while a lady is talking. Sit down and eat your breakfast while it's hot. For a girl with an appetite like a peacock, you think a lot about food. But there's no sense in letting your eggs get cold, is there? When my putting is off, I don't like eggs hot or cold. Hmm, it looks good. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Mr. Jarvis. Good morning. Have some <coughs> breakfast. Oh, no thanks. How about some coffee? Oh, well, I was never known to refuse that. Well, what about that bloodhound of yours? You picked up the scent yet? Yes, he's found them again. I got a wire from him this morning. He says, um, located Kane and Boy at Hollywood Park Racetrack. Will not let them get away this time. Wire instructions. I'll bet you two to one he lets them get away again. Oh, I hope not. Well, he's been chasing them around the country for the last year and a half. Every time he picks up the scent, he manages to lose them just before we get there. Looks like he's nursing a fat job. I'll bet half of his expense account represents mutual tickets. Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Mason. This fellow Kane seems to have friends wherever he goes. Dugan thinks he gets tipped off. Now I'll lay you three to one. It's another false alarm. Will you be sensible? Well, I'm getting sick and tired of going off on one wild goose chase after another. Why don't you give it up and let them alone? Let them alone? That's what I said, let them alone. Daniel Mason, I will not have my grandson living a life like that, going from racetrack to racetrack associating with the friends of that horse doctor uncle of his. Living like a gypsy, he should be back here with us. Oh, poppycock. When I was his age, I worked in a livery stable, up to my knees in hay. When I was older, I was a bricklayer. Didn't seem to hurt me any. I'll bet that boy's learning a lot of things that'll help to make a man of him later on. Besides that, he's probably having the time of his life. Pay no attention to him, Mr. Travis. What do you want us to do? Well, we should take the first plane for California, don't you think so, Mr. Mason? What difference does it make what I think? All right. Will you make the reservations? I've already made them. California, here we come. And uh, Thomas the second, yes, Calapas and the red pepper, head and head. Calapas and red pepper, yes, red pepper and Calapas. They're coming across the line of finish now with Calapas on the rail, red pepper on the outside, but Calapas wins it by ourselves. The red pepper is... Sure is done wonderful for that leg, Mr. King. Colonel Taylor kind of figured on Smokey to run his last race. No, there's a lot of good races left in him yet, Josh. Don't you think so, Danny? Yeah, looks like a four-legged horse to me. Yes, sir, old boy. You'll be going to post sooner than you think. For about 20 minutes, three or four times a day, Josh. Not any longer than that, just 20 minutes at a time. I'll drop back in a couple of days and see how he's getting along. Come on, Danny, we got to see how little Pebble's bad tooth is. Better walk him around a little now, Josh, before you put him away. Yeah. So long, Josh. Uh, so long. Hello, Jim. Hello, Ed. How are you, Danny? Fine, thanks. Like to do me a favor? Sure, what? Get me a nice clean cone, will you? Strawberry. Just one? Just one. Oh. Got some bad news for you, Jim. About the kid? Yeah. I just came from downtown, and his grandparents are starting guardianship proceedings. I was in the office. When an eastern detective named Dugan came in and took out a subpoena for you. His lab will be here after you any minute. Oh, thanks, Ed, for tipping me off. Oh, why can't they let me alone? You'd think I was a kidnapper or something. Well, I wouldn't talk like that, Jim. You know how people are. Old man Mason has lots of money, and he probably thinks that he can do things for him that you can't. Things that he's entitled to. And after all, he is their grandson. Yeah, that's right. You know, if I thought he'd be happier with him, I'd give him up in a minute, without a squawk. But I know he wouldn't. He's not that kind of a kid. What kind of a chance do you think I'd have, Ed, if it really came to court? Not much. That probably contend you're no fit guardian for him. And with this racetrack atmosphere, there isn't anything for a boy of his age. See, our Lieutenant, one ice cream cone, strawberry. Strawberry? Sure. Well, what did you get strawberry for? Well, that's what you told me to get. Did I? Sure. Well, I don't see why I told you that. I don't like strawberry. You don't? No. Gee, that's too bad. Want me to take it back and change it? No, don't bother. You eat it. Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so long, Jim. So long, Ed. Best of luck to you. Thanks. You need any money? No, Colonel Taylor owes me a little. Thanks just the same, though. Okay. 
So long, Danny. So long, Lieutenant. And thanks for the ice cream. Gee, he's a swell fella. But I'd have sworn he said strawberry. He did. <laughs> Come on, Danny. We gotta get going. He sure is walking fine. <laughs> Don't seem to be favoring that leg none at all. Oh, that's fine, Josh. Say, what time do you expect Colonel Taylor back? Oh, he won't be back at all today. Till he's going to the ranch. Oh, he won't, huh? No, sir. Uh, did you want to see him special? Well, yeah, I could use a little money. Money? <laughs> uh, how much you need? How much you got? Well, I got eleven dollars and something. Close on to twelve with this extra change here. I could let you have ten dollars, but this one dollar here, I'm saving that for a crap game tonight. Swell. Thanks a lot, Josh. You tell the Colonel and he'll pay you back. Yes, yeah, sir. You got something good? No, Danny and I got to be on our way today. Well, so long, Josh. We'll be yes. back sometime. So long. Oh, Josh. Yes. If a fella comes around here looking for us, tell him we were here, but we went that way. That way. In a big black sedan. <laughs> Come on, Danny. Well, I got you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, you! Sir? I'm looking for a fellow named Jim Kane. Do you know him? Uh, yes, sir. I is you the gentleman he was expecting? I guess so. Yes. I got a very important message for him. Have you uh, seen him? Yes, sir. He was here not more than a minute ago. Which way did he go? He went that way. In a black sea there. I mean a big black sea there. That way. Yes, that way. Thanks. <laughs> you better hurry. <laughs> Go the faster you hurry, the further away from him you is going to get. <laughs> What's on your mind, Uncle Jim? Hmm? I say, what's on your mind? Oh, nothing, except that your grandmother's caught up with us again. I might have known that the way we scrammed out of Hollywood Park. You know, Danny, sometimes I think maybe it would be better if you did go back to live with them. Huh? Yeah, after all, you'd have everything you want. Lots of money, all the clothes you need. They'd probably even send you to some expensive school. Who said I want any of those things, huh? Well, don't you? No, I'm getting along all right. I want to stay with you. Danny, it isn't always what you want that counts. It's what's best for you. But you remember? You told me you'd take care of me. You promised Mama. Yes, I know, but... Well, you wouldn't break your promise, would you? Or that is, unless... Unless... Well, unless what? Unless she didn't want me anymore. What did you say? Said it, unless she didn't want me anymore. Don't you ever say that again. Don't even think it. Okay, that's settled. Now where are we headed for this time? Bill Garrity's place up at Hot Springs. He's got a lot of horses running there. And he still owes me some money from last year. How far is that? Oh, about a thousand miles. Gee, that's a long way to go on ten bucks. <laughs> they, uh, they told me there are a lot of fine golf courses out here. Yes, I understand. I met a movie star on the grill last night, a chap named Alan Hale. He invited me to play at uh, Lakeside, I think you call it. Yes, a lot of picture people play out there. Good morning, Mr. Travers. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Mason. Did you sleep well last night? Yes, but I would have been better off without that Mexican tamale. <laughs> Darling, that's just your imagination. Come in. Good morning. Hello, Dugan. Well, was Kane surprised when you handed in that subpoena? Well, he, uh, I mean, he, uh... I knew it. Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. You didn't serve them. Not exactly. I couldn't find them. But you said they were in Hollywood Park. That's right, lady. They was there, but they took a powder on them. Took a what? I mean, uh, they ain't there now. Dear, this is very provoking. It's absolutely ridiculous. Well, it's just as I predicted. What happened? I don't know. I just couldn't find them. Well, did you find out where they went? Yeah, sure. They went that way, in a black sedan. A big black sedan. Well, it's very simple. All we have to do is to find a big black sedan. Daniel, that isn't a <laughs> bit funny. Well, it's funny to me, and it's getting funnier every minute. First, Dugan finds them. Then we dash madly across the country. Travers gets out a subpoena. Then Dugan loses them. And off we go again. By the way, what do you do with all those old subpoenas? 
I got them all here, Mr. Mason. Well, why don't you trade them in for a pair of handcuffs? Well, I got a pair of handcuffs. You have, eh? Yeah. Well, the next time you catch up with them, use them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, Mr. How far is it to Hot Springs? Oh, uh, say about, uh, about 200 miles or so. Oh, is it that far? Yep, even a little further. You want it? Come on, here. <laughs> Let's go into a huddle. I only got a dollar and 22 cents. Now look, you fill her up. Never mind about the oil. I think it's still about half full. And I'll give you the dollar and leave my watch with you for the balance. What do you say? It's a good watch. Keeps perfect time. It was given to me by a big racetrack man. It's a stopwatch, too. What are those holes? Well, they had diamonds in them once. What do you say? I'll pick them up in a couple of days. That's what those others said. Well, anyhow, you'll never have to buy a watch. <laughs> I guess not. But one more wouldn't hurt, would it? I gotta have some gas, and a dollar's worth won't get me where I'm going. Hey, Spot, come on, come on! Spot, come on, come on over here. Come on, Spot. Come on now. Go, shoot, what's the matter? What's the matter, huh? Excuse me just a minute. Uh, fill her up. Never mind the oil. Just give me some water. Yes? Hello, Daddy. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here. Is he your dog? Yes, ma'am. What's his name? Spot. He's, he's smart, too. Does tricks. Look, I'll show you. Dead dog, come on. Lay down. Dead dog. Dead dog. Dead to the good boy. Dead to the good boy. Dead dog. Pretty good, huh? I... I'll say he's smart. Come on, Spot. I'd like to have a dog like that for my little nephew. You would? Yes. How old is your nephew? He's about your age. Do you think he'd like Spot? Oh, I'm sure he would. Well, would you like to buy him? You wouldn't sell him, would you? Well, it's like this. My uncle and I are pretty busy, and we travel around a lot, and it's really no life for a dog like Spot. If your nephew had him, he'd have a good home, wouldn't he? Oh, yes. They have a farm with chickens and turkeys and cows and everything. I bet Spot would like that. I bet. How much do you want for him? Well, would... would ten dollars be too much? No, I don't think so. Well... Well, I guess maybe you can have him. Fine. Come on, Spot. Come on. What do I owe you? The uh, 224. Thank you. <laughs> well, hello there, boy. Give this boy $10, dear. $10? Dollars, dear. Ten dollars? What I... for? I just bought Spot from him. What in the world will you... I'm going to get him to Jackson's. Oh. There you are, son. Thanks. And tell your nephew to take good care of him, won't you? I will. And he likes hamburgers without onions. I'll tell him. Too. Thanks a lot. That's quite a favor.
Here you are, Uncle Jim. Where in the world did you get that? Well, you see that lady in that other car over there. She told me about her nephew, and, and he lost the dog and sick and hurt near dying. And she said if he didn't have another dog, he might not live. And she, well, she wanted Spot awful bad. But so, so I, I sold her Spot. He'll like it on the farm, don't you think, Uncle Jim? Yeah. Yeah, I guess he will. That'll be 225, please. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Gee, I wish I'd ask him where that farm was. Well, come on, Danny. Let's go in and wrap ourselves around a couple of nice, juicy steaks. You go ahead, Uncle Jim. I'm not hungry. Now, look here, Danny. You haven't had a thing to eat all day. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, I'm just not hungry. Danny. He doesn't belong to you anymore, you know. I know, but it's not my fault you can't keep him, is it? No. Well, I really wanted him to. I did, honest. But you always said it's not what you want that counts. It's the best thing for you. Gosh, he must be hungry. Say, Uncle Jim, let's make a three juicy steaks. All right. Come on, Spike. You better wait here in the car for me, Danny. How long will you be? Well, I don't know. If Garrity's been in the money lately, I ought to get my 50 bucks like that. Well, good luck. Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. Well, uh, hello, Doc. Uh, hello, Bill. Where'd you come from? I've been out in California, Hollywood Park. Great track, that. I'd like to go there sometime. If I could only get my hands on enough cash to pay for shipping my horses. <laughs> How are things coming? Oh, not so good. How about you? Well, uh, things haven't been bad exactly so far. Managed to keep my feed bill paid. Expect to get the money this afternoon. You remember Jubilo? Yeah, I fixed him up for Tommy Nelson last year. Well, there he is. I claimed him three months ago. He's going in the last race this afternoon. If I had a little loose change, I might make a bet on him myself. Is it that bad? This isn't good. I got exactly six bucks. Well, I can give you a ten of what I owe you. And if you put it on his nose, you may win a hatful. Which is our horse, Uncle Jim? Number 10. Didn't get off any too well to the bill. No, he's a slow starter, don't worry. Gee, pretty far back, isn't he? Wait till he hits the stretch. Why didn't you put it all in his nose like I told you? Well, I, I thought I'd better play safe. Now I can pay you another 40 bucks out of you, Jim. That's well. Gee, Uncle Jim, that makes $372. Gosh, what are we going to do with all that money? You'd be surprised, Dan. Who 
Who's Charlie? My wife's brother. Is he a detective, too? No, he's a bartender. Oh. We better get to Hot Springs right away. Yes. You grab a plane tonight, Duke, and we'll leave the first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. And don't let them get away from you this time. Leave that to me, lady. Yeah. You and your wife's brother. Yeah. Well, buddy, how you like your new collar? Is you okay? Say, Uncle Jim, we sure put a dent in that bankroll, didn't we? Yeah. But what's the difference? We won't need any money up at Johnny's. We're going to be his guests. What kind of place is it? Oh, he's got a stud farm with a lot of good racing stock on it. Used to belong to Whitey Langdon. Johnny rode for him about 15 years ago. Won the Kentucky Derby for him once. Johnny was a great jockey. Was he as good as Todd Salone? Well, almost, I'd say. Gee, he must be good. Yeah, you like Johnny. He's a great little fella. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I bet Grandma Flatfoot is still looking for us in Hollywood Park. Well, I'll lay odds they'll never find us up at Celebrity Farm. As you know, Celebrity Farm was one of Mr. Langdon's favorite hobbies. During his lifetime, he counted you all amongst his very best friends. In fact, he established this place as a means of showing his appreciation and of repaying in some slight degree the pleasure and amusement that each of you have given him by your individual talent. I know it was his intent that you should enjoy his hospitality here as long as you live. Unfortunately, he made no mention of this in his will. His heirs, however, have asked me to inform you that they are willing to carry out his intent insofar as your staying here is concerned, but they do not feel called upon to bear the expense and the upkeep of the farm any longer. Do I make the situation clear? Yeah. As I get it, we're on our own. Putting it briefly, that's it. Looks like I'd better get out and take a cards and practice up a bit. I'm a little rusty. The most important clause in most wills is the clause that's left out. <laughs> well, Clara, we better wire our agent in Hollywood. Do you think he'd remember us? Well, he ought to. We paid him plenty. Oh. <laughs> that's a punch. Mr. Langdon would never throw on himself. You're quite right, Mr. Jeffries. Quite right. But that's how it stands. Now, if you folks will let me know as soon as possible what you intend to do, I'll be glad to help you all I can. Oh, yes, sir, one other thing, Mr. Martin. In going through Mr. Langdon's papers, we came across this note for $350 signed by you. Why, Mr. Langdon told me to forget it. I don't doubt that. But the heirs have instructed me to collect it. If I had 350 bucks, I'd sit up all night and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were most emphatic about it. In fact, if it's not paid within a reasonable length of time, they'll deny you the privilege of staying here. Well, I guess that's about all. Let's be here from you. Goodbye. 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 It never rains, but it pours. <laughs> it's got to do uh, now. <laughs> There's a Mr. Kane on the phone for you, Mr. Johnny. Kane? Jim Kane? Yes, sir. That's him. Thanks, Washington. Hello, Jim. Yeah, this is Johnny. Where did you come from? Oh, that's a long story, Johnny. I'll tell you when I see you. Say, how do I get to that place of yours? Well, where are you? Oh, you're all right. Just stay on the same highway for about 12 miles. Yes, sir. He done told me and the cook and the maid and the outside boys and all of us that when our month's up, that's it. What does you want to ask and tell him? Well, uh, we don't know what we're going to do just yet, Washington. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Of course, me, it don't make no difference about it. I've been here since Martha Langham himself was a little boy. And here I stay from now on, uh, regardless. That's fine, Washington. Oh, well, then I can still have coffee in bed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> coffee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was an old pal of mine. Yes? Yeah. yeah, he'll be here in about a half hour. And from the way he talks, it looks like he's in the money. So it looks like my troubles are over. <laughs> That's great, Johnny. Oh. Glad to hear it. Yes, indeed. I don't know where he got the idea, but he seems to think I own this place and... And you folks are my guests. <laughs> kind of a silly idea, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is funny. <laughs> hey, would it help any if we just let it go at that and acted like we were? Well, it wouldn't hurt. He'll probably only be here a few days. Oh, well, what he don't know, you know. Okay, then, Johnny, that's the way it'll be. <laughs> Your aunt. Well, 
Danny, here we are. Gee, this is a swell place. How long are we going to be here? Oh, I don't know, Danny. A couple of months, maybe more. It all depends. Oh, boy. Is this Johnny Martin's place? Uh, yes, sir. I expect you, Mr. King. Yeah, that's right. Well, come right in, sir. Mr. John is expecting you. Thank you. Yeah. Come on, Danny. Come on, Spot. Hello, Jim. Gee, it's great to see you again. You look swell. You don't look so bad yourself, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, this is my sister's little boy, Danny Mason. Danny, Hello, this is Mr. Danny. Martin. Hello, This is Spot. Is it all right for him to be in here? Sure, sure. Come on in. I want you to meet some friends of mine. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Give the man your hand. Come on, Danny. Larry, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Jim Kane and his nephew, Danny Mason. Larry Gray. Uh, excuse me, Cardo the Great. How do you do, sir? How are oh, you? How do you do? Oh. Hello, Sonny. Hello, Mr. Cardo. Hello. Oh. Excuse me, Larry. Jim, I want you to meet a great lawyer from New York, Joe Farrell. How are you, Mr. Kane? Very glad to meet you, sir. Hi, Sonny. How do you do? And Miss Young, Mr. Kane. Uh, How do you do? Not Clara Kimball Young. Yes, that's right. I'm very glad to meet you. You were always one of my favorites. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kane. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. And Mr. Bushman. Bushman? Yes, Francis X. Bushman. I'd have known you anywhere. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, I have grown a bit heavier. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Bushman, there's something I've always wanted to know. What's that, Mr. Kane? Did you really drive that chariot in Ben-Hur? Sure did. Never had a double in my life. Always did my own stunts. That was a great race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, Jim Jeffries. Hello there, don't get up. I met you a long time ago at Saratoga with Tex Rickard. Oh, yes, I remember. I'm glad to meet you again. Thank you, sir. Uh, look, Johnny, I didn't know you were going to be so crowded here. I wouldn't have barged in like this. Oh, that's all right. There's always room for one more. Hello there, young fellow. Good morning, Mr. Bushman. Gee, that water looks good. Feels just as good as it looks, too. Can you swim? Sure. Well, why don't you come in? I'll have to ask my Uncle Jim first. Go ahead and ask him. You'll find some trunks in the uh, dressing room. I'll be right back. All right. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Danny Mason. What's yours? Carol Carter. You live here, too? No, I'm staying in a hotel down in the village. Oh, I thought I hadn't seen you before. What are you doing? Writing a book. Yeah? What about? Oh, about all these famous people around here. Miss Young, Mr. Bushman, Mr. Jeffrey. You gonna put my Uncle Jim in it, too? Who? My Uncle Jim, Jim King. He's one of the best veterinarians in the world. Is that so? Yeah, don't you know him? No, can't say that I do. Gee, that's funny. Everyone knows Jim Kane. He's a swell fella. You'll like him. Will I? He'll like you, too. You're pretty. <laughs> oh, Danny, <laughs> if you were 10 years older, you'd have me blushing. <laughs> that certainly is a nice place you got to hear, Johnny. I'm glad to see you saved your money. You're smart. Yeah. Remember Lady Notable? Yeah. That's her. Hey, that's a nice looking fool with her. Who's he by? Judge Cal Pepper's Formosa. The judge has the next farm. Uh, that three are all his Formosa called too. They're full brothers. Yeah? What do you call him? Mr. Celebrity. He looks good. Have you want anything with him? No, I haven't started him yet. He's got a bad leg. Can't seem to clear it up. You ought to do all right with a bloodline like that. You ought to have plenty of speed and stamina. Say, maybe I can fix that leg up while I'm here. It's a shame to let breeding like that go to waste. You want me to try? Look, Jim, let me put you straight. I don't own these horses any more than this place. It's Whitey Langdon's. And five years ago, he invited me to live here as long as I wanted. The same as those folks you met last night. I don't know why I wrote you all that hooey, except maybe, well, I knew you got around a lot, and I didn't want the gang to think I was broke. Look, Johnny, that's no disgrace nowadays. Some of the richest men in the world are broke. Hello. 
Good morning, Miss Young. Hello. Well, how are you, son? Fine, thanks. That's good. How's the book getting on? Well, I've typed what we talked about yesterday, but there's several things I want to check with you. Oh, all right. I'll get a chair. Good. Well, I gotta go find my Uncle Jim. So long. Bye. Yeah, but the worst of it is, Whitey's estate holds a marker against me for three fifty, And if I don't pay it, bingo goes my room and board, and then I am in a jam. Uh, you haven't got three fifty on you, have you, Jim? <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, Johnny. No, my bankroll is about 17 bucks. You're welcome to that. Thanks, but I don't think that's going to do me much good. When did you start in pictures? In 1912. That's a long time ago, isn't it? I uh, made my first pictures with the Vitagraph Company. That was all the way back in New York, uh, or uh, Flatbush, to be exact. <laughs> in those days, we used to make 500-foot uh, pictures and 1,000-foot uh, pictures, and two or three a week, you know. <laughs> oh, those were hectic days. I remember the first three-reeler we ever made was J.M. Barry's uh, The Little Minister. We thought that the audience would sit through it, that they'd fall asleep. <laughs> oh, imagine that. Well, did they? Oh, no, of course not, because right after that, we started making five real pictures. So the lawyer said, the folks can stay here as long as they want. And I can, too, if I pay up the note. But we have to pay the expenses of the place. How do you expect to do that? Have they got any money? Oh, I imagine all of them have some money. But we haven't talked it over yet. Well, if I can be of any help, count me in. Okay. Mr. Bushman wants to... Me to go in swimming with him. Is it okay? Yeah, I guess so. Where are you going? In a pool. Pool? Have you got a pool here? Yeah, we've got everything but money. Come on, I'll show you. Well, you run along. I gotta make a couple of long distance calls before they cut off the phone. Oh, let's see you later. Come on, fella. And Rudolph Valentine? Oh. Yes, he only played a small part in it. But it was through that picture that he got his chance in the four horsemen. That's marvelous. I've got that all. Now, I wish you'd try to think of some particular incidents that occurred during the filming of a picture that you think people would be interested in reading about. Well, I know a lot of funny ones. Five. <laughs> Dozens of them, in fact. That's just what I want. All right, I'll think them up and see you later. Well. <laughs> Somebody else did it for me. Oh, that's different. I'll say it's done. Say, Jeff, you see what I see. <laughs> yeah, she's got to grow up a bit, don't he, before he feels them bad. Hey, Bob, come on. Well, so long, pal. Hotel in Saratoga. Hello, Joe. Hi, Daddy. Oh, I don't know. What's that under your chin? Nothing. Oh, yes, there is. Say, that reminds me. You promised to teach me some card tricks. So I did, Danny. So I did. Well, how's the bat? All right, let's go. Okay, Danny, now let me see. You want to see a card trick, right? Yeah. I'll show you how it's done. Now, here. There is a pack of cards. Can you see those? Some of them. Some of them. Now, oh, hold them yourself. You pick out the ones you can see and give the others to me. Will you do that? Maybe you can see these. How's that? Yeah, I can All see right. Them. We'll use these. That's much better. 
That's the same thing as the others, only they're a little bit bigger. You see what I mean, Daddy? Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you see those all right? Yeah, I see. Can you tell one card from the other? Uh-huh. Which is the other? Yeah. Here is the idea of the trick. Now, you follow me. Take out one of those cards, will you please? Just one. Don't let me see it. You know what it is? Would you know how to get it? You saw it? Yes. You would? Put it back in the pack, please. Right inside the deck. Now, shuffle them up. That's enough. Now, look. Here is the idea. See? Well, you can't waste all that shuffling cards. You understand? You have a card in there. You see what I mean, Danny? One of those is yours. I don't have to do that if I don't want to. That just shows you the cards are all mixed up. See what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the idea. We're going to find your card without looking for it. You understand? Yeah. Here's the way you do it. When I do that, you say stop anytime you like. See what I mean? Yeah. No matter what card you stop at, that will be the one you drew. Okay? Yeah. Here we go. Stop. Stop. Right there? Yeah. You want that one? Okay, you remember the card you drew, don't you? Yeah. All right, there it is. You see what I mean? That, <laughs> that isn't it. it. What? That isn't it. What do you mean, that isn't it? What did you draw? What was it? Ace of spades. Oh, ace of spades. You didn't draw this, huh? No. Blow on that, will you, please? <laughs> see how easy that is, Daddy? <laughs> I'll show you how to do that. Would you like to learn that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's the way you do it. What is that? Ace of spades, right? Yeah. You see any more ace of spades in there? No, sir. No more in there. You don't need any more. One is all you need. Yeah. <laughs> all right, your hand. Your right hand. That's the boy. On this side, please. That's right. Take your glove off. Well, it doesn't really matter. Here. Here's the idea of the trick, Daddy. You put the ace of spades inside the pack like that. Now, put one finger on there. The clean one, please. That's right. Now, say, come, ace. Come, ace. Take it off there. See how easy that is? Say, how many ace of spades you got in here? What do you mean, how many ace of spades? One. Hold that. Look, there are no more ace of spades in there. You see what I mean? Yeah. In fact, you don't even have to use the ace of spades if you don't want to. You can do the trick with any card. Here, I'll tell you what I'll do. Put the ace of spades down there and put your foot on it. That's right. Now, look. I've got all kinds of cards in there. You don't have to use the ace of spades. So take out another one, will you please? One card. Don't let me see it. Say, just what I thought. What? You got two ace of spades. Where? One here and one there. Is that so? <laughs> you don't seem to get the idea of this thing. Folks have decided to do about staying here or if you've talked over anything yet. But Jim here has an idea which may solve our problem. Tell it to them, Jim. Yeah, what is it, Jim? Well, I had a look at Mr. Celebrity today, and I'm sure I can fix up that leg of his. Fine! And Johnny and I can get him into condition in time to start him in some of those cheap races when the Churchill Downs meeting opens. And if I know anything about horses, I'm sure he can win a couple of them. That sounds good to me. At least it'll get Johnny out of a jam. Oh, I'm all for it. Why, well, I haven't been photographed in the winner's circle, putting flowers on a horse for, uh, oh, since the 1925 Derby. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a minute, just a minute. Let me call your attention to the fact that we have no legal right to race him. I thought it sounded too good to be true. Oh, I think the estate will let us do it. As the only legal mind in the crowd, I think it's up to you to present our case. I'd be glad to do that if you say so. What do you say, Jim? Clara? Oh. Oh, yes, my Sounds well to me. Motion carried. You're elected, Joe. <laughs> okay, get me a typewriter and some paper. Uh, I'll get it the first thing in the morning. Did you win the championship? The 9th of June in 1899, I beat Robert Fitzsimmons for the championship of the world. How many fights have you had? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Didn't you keep track of it? No, ma'am. <laughs> what was your hardest fight? I think it was Tom Sharkey. I fought him 25 rounds. I knocked him down several times. He'd roll over and get up. Come tearing right at me. We went to 25 rounds and I got the decision. Wonderful. When was your first fight? Oh, in 1893. 
Do you think you could have beat Joe Lewis? Well, I think I've beat better men than Joe Lewis. <laughs> if I don't get going, I'll never get this done. <laughs> oh, hello, Judge. Yeah. Oh, Frank. That's a mighty fine workout. Go up to my farm over there. Yeah, Jim's done a good job. Oh, I beg your pardon, yeah. Judge. Uh, Jim Kane. Judge Culpepper, Jim. How are you, Judge? Mighty well, glad to know you, sir. You know, Mr. Kane, I have sort of a personal interest in that celebrity horse. I own his father. Yes, I know. Looks like he's ready to go to the post any time. Well, we're figuring on dropping him into a race pretty soon. When you do, there'll be a couple of dollars of my money right on his nose. <laughs> Smokey. Yes? Come over here, will you? Don't forget, you got plenty of horse under you today. Yeah, he looks good to me, Mr. Kane. He is good. Uh-uh, that's not for you. Maybe after you win the race, I'll give you one. Stay forth until you hit the far turn, then let him roll. Okay. Hey, Smokey, the golf for his mouth. It's pretty tender. All right, Shorty, I'll watch it. Oh, well, all right. It won't make you feel any better. This race means a lot to all of us, Smokey. If you win this one, you can ride him in the Southern Handicap next week. What's he eating? An apple. Don't you know you're not supposed to feed a horse anything before the race? It'll give him colic. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's too late to be sorry now. You should have thought of that in the first place. Anyone with any sense ought to know better than that. Why, he just will not. Gee, Carol, I didn't mean to talk to you like that. I guess I was just a little excited. That's all right, Danny. I suppose I deserve worse than that. But I'd better tell Jim. No, don't do that yet. That would be a shock to him. Let's just hope celebrity wins anyhow. Well, whatever you say, Danny. And please don't tell him how I talk to you. That would be a shock, too. Okay, little friend. Good luck, Smokey. Thank you. You're gonna need it. Come on, Carol, let's get up to the box. Uh -huh. The only one who's got a chance against celebrity. Oh, now. No, I don't think so. Well, how is he? Fit as a fiddle. Great. Here they come. There he is. How does he look? Oh, he's the prettiest one there. Oh, boy, like a billion dollars. He's hello, 39, eh? Hello. Oh, hello, Judge. Yeah. See, they got that celebrity hall play 20 to 1, Jim. What chance do you think you have? He's in there to win, Judge, I can tell you that. Uh, well, <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> oh, so do we all, Judge. That's the end of it. Looking at him. That's in mighty fine condition to me. He is, Judge. You make me nervous. Shut up. Why doesn't that work? Clear off.
Do you think that old leg trouble had anything to do with it? No, no, he didn't pull up lame. Jim, could it be possible your stopwatch was off in the workouts? No. No, this is one of the best stopwatches made. I guess he just wasn't the horse we thought he was. No use of putting him in the Southern Handicap now, do you think? No, I guess not. He's just a morning glory. But it wasn't the Liberty's fault, Uncle Jim. I know why he didn't win. So do we, Danny. He just wasn't fast enough. That isn't it at all. He had the colic. The colic? Yeah, someone fed him an apple just before the race. How do you know? Well, I saw it, that's how. Who was it? Well, I can't tell you. Why not? Well, I just can't, that's all. Now look here, Danny. This race meant a lot to all of us here. If what you say is true and you know who did it, I want you to tell me who it was right now. I don't want to, Uncle Jim. Please don't make me. It won't do any good. Excuse me, Mr. King, but Miss Cow wants to see you. Sure, right in, please. She says she wants to see you outside. All right. Now, I'll be right back, young fella, and then you're going to tell me. I got a hunch I won't have to. What did you say? I said I... I, I, I hope I, I hope I don't have to. Jim, I'm terribly sorry about celebrity. Yes, it was too bad, but we know what happened. Danny just told me somebody fed him an apple before the race. Yes, I know. What? I did it. You? I didn't know it would hurt him or I wouldn't have done it for anything in the world. <laughs> you know, I ought to spank you good, but I'm so glad to find out what really happened. I could kiss you. Why don't you? Hmm? I said, why don't you? What? Well, you asked for it. And I got it. <laughs> Come on, I want to denounce you in front of all of them. There he is. Well, Dugan? Everything's under control this time. Where are they? They're living out at a place called Celebrity Farm. Did you serve them? No, but I'm going out there first thing in the morning. I got all the subpoenas. Good. Well, phone me as soon as you've served him. If you serve him. Yes, so I'll do that. Come on, Mr. Travers, I'm famished. What time are you going out there? After breakfast, about 8 o'clock. Pick me up, I'll go with you. Okay, I will. Gosh, Jim, he's really sailing today. Yeah, his old lady can't seem to keep up with him. That's them. Wait a minute. Don't get out yet. Look at that kid ride. That's my grandson. I know that. Oh, do you? Uh -huh. Oh, sure, of course you do. Look. I'll be right back. Look, wait till the boy leaves before you serve Kane. If I'm not here when you get back, wait for me. All right. Did you learn to ride like that? Oh, my Uncle Jim's been teaching me. You're not going to take me away, are you, Gramps? Well, I don't know. Wouldn't you like that? Well, it isn't that I don't want to. I, I, I just want to stay with my Uncle Jim. He's a swell guy, Gramps. You'd like him if you knew him better. And he takes good care of me. Honest. And Johnny said I'm going to be another Todd Salone. And you wouldn't want to spoil anything, would you, Gramps? Well, no, but uh, your grandmother doesn't think this is the place for you. But Grandma don't understand like we do. And she never rode Celebrity. She don't even know him. Well, let's worry about that later on. <laughs> Come on over here and sit down and tell me all about yourself. Now, the last time I heard about you, you were in Hollywood Park. Now, where'd you go from there? Oh, my Uncle Jim and I, we got in the car and we finally wound ourselves up and... Hot spring. <laughs> Hot spring? <laughs> You've been hopscotching around, haven't you? 
Is he meeting better horses in this next race? Well, yes, but he won't be carrying the weight he was last time. No? No. He'll be one apple lighter. Oh, you! <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Kane. Good morning. Something I can do for you? Yeah, read this. So long. Well, it looks like they finally caught up with me. What is it, Jim? Danny's grandparents have filed a custody suit. Oh, well, it had to happen sometime. I guess it might as well be now. Well, isn't there anything you can do about it? I don't know. Why not ask Mr. Farrell? He used to be a big New York lawyer once. Well? Come on, at least he can advise you. So I've been going from one racetrack to another. Fried chicken one night, beans the next. It all depends on what horse Uncle Jim picks. But I always had plenty to eat. and never was sick, anything like that. He takes good care of me, he does. I'll bet he does. You look fine. Come on over and say hello to Uncle Jim. Oh, not now. I'll see him later. I better get back to the village before your grandmother sends out a searching party. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, jockey. <coughs> so long, Gramps. And if you want a sure thing, put a bet on celebrities no Saturday. Well, maybe I will. Goodbye, Daddy. So long, Gramps. And so, say hello to Grandma, will you? I will. by the barn. I told him to wait and see you, but he said no, he'd see you later. He didn't say where, did he? No, he just said he'd see... Gee, 50 bucks! I wonder when he put that there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought there might be a couple more. Here, Uncle Jim. No, you keep it, Danny. It's yours. Come on, Carol. Oh, and Danny, if you see any more grandfathers like yours around, save one for me. <laughs> the Masons are very wealthy people, and they probably have some high-powered New York attorney, so I don't suppose I have much of a chance. Let me see. Richard Travers. He's high-powered, all right. Why, do you know him? Yes, yes, indeed. Very well. Do you know if he's handling this case himself? Oh, I imagine so. There's probably a large fee in it. I'd just like to have one more crack at him. What do you mean? Oh, it's a long story, Jim. Ten years ago, I was one of the best criminal lawyers in New York. I saved dozens of my clients from going to the chair. And the last case I tried, why, the man was really innocent. Travers was district attorney. And the case was so easy. <laughs> I beat him so many times before that, well, I guess I got careless. And Travis sent the poor man up for 20 years. And that was the end of my legal career. Richard Travis, attorney at law. Let's find out if Richard is in town. Second District Court, Madison County, Kentucky now in session. Judge Culpepper presiding. Case of Mason versus Kane. Plaintiff ready? Ready, Your Honor. Defendant ready? If it please, Your Honor, the counsel for the defense was retained only yesterday. May I ask a day's postponement to prepare my case? May it please the court. In view of the defendant's habit of disappearing mysteriously, don't you think a delay most unwise? I'll guarantee the appearance of Mr. Kane and the child. All right, Joe. Here and postponed until tomorrow, this same time. I go on. The handicap's tomorrow, Judge. You ain't figuring I'm missing it. Hmm. Thanks. You sure that one day is enough, Joe? Well, uh... Well, all right, all right, then. I'll give you two days. But, Your Honor, counsel only asked for one. Did you say one or two days, Joe? Well, uh, uh, yes, you're right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hearing postponed until day after tomorrow, same time. Uh, your Honor, may I ask that the custody of the boy be given my clients pending trial? No, you may not. Court adjourned. 
You will need more than two days' preparation to win this case. Oh, I don't know. I've won bigger cases than this from you, with less. <laughs> well, we didn't get off to a very good start, did we? No worry. Two days won't help Pharaoh very much. A lot of things can happen in two days. What are you talking about? Supposing that horse of his wins the handicap tomorrow. Suppose he does. What of it? Well, he'll come into quite a bit of money and a good chance to make a whole lot more. What's money got to do with it? Oh, nothing. Except his lack of it has been the principal point in our favor. But he hasn't won the race yet. No, and maybe he won't. And maybe he will. Hello, Smokey. Come here. I can't stop now. I have to weigh in. Come here. I got a little job for you. Come inside. Now, you can make it look like you couldn't help it. You know. Get in a pocket and then go to the outside after it's too late. I can't do that. This race means too much to these people. You wouldn't like that little fair of Maryland of a year ago to kick back on you, would you? Now listen. No, you listen. Here, Uncle Jim, and I saw Smokey going in the barn with that flat foot dugan. What? Where? Over there. Come on, I'll show you. Here, put this on him. You wait here, honey. Now, there's 500 of them for you. One of now, and the other 300 after the race is over. Go in and take that suit off. Oh, listen, Mr. Kane. Go on, take that suit off before I... Run in and get another jockey, Johnny. Where am I going to find another boy? There are 18 horses in this race. There isn't another jock on the track. Well, the only other thing to do is for you to ride him yourself. Oh, Jim, I'm not in shape. I'll never make it. And what about my license? I'll fix it up with the stewards. It's either that or scratch him. Now go on, Johnny. Put on that suit. Oh, well, all right. Yeah, I wish I could. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, okay. please. I'm not worried about him. Johnny yeah, Kane scratches. Okay, no, up, Joe. Johnny uh, Martin okay. replacing Smokey Saunders on number 16, Mr. Celebrity. Make the weight on Mr. Celebrity 121, five pounds overweight. That Johnny is all. Martin. Mm. I should say so. Here he comes, Uncle Jim. It's all yours, Johnny. Well, Jim, here's hoping. Good luck. What was that announcement all about? They're changing jockeys on Mr. Celebrity. Oh, wonderful. I don't know. Boy, did you hear that? Johnny Martin's riding Mr. Celebrity. Ha, he's a good jockey. Used to be one of the best. Here comes Jim. Oh, say, Jim, what happened? Yes, tell us. Oh, uh, a little skullduggery. I'll tell you about it later. Here he comes. There he is, Cardo. Johnny looks a little nervous. Yes, so am I. <laughs> hello, Judge. Oh, hello, Jeff. Who are you betting on? Who am I betting on? Well, there's only one horse worth the bet. In my opinion, old Johnny Martin can still ride rings around any of those kids. He doesn't be crazy. He made a comeback. Well, I hope he does, because I've got a bet on him. So why? <laughs> They're off.
are on the winner. That's what I'm grinning about. Dad, <laughs> you didn't. Why not? I'm a Republican, but I won money on Roosevelt, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks a lot. You did swell this time. In addition to properly educating the boy, Your Honor, my clients will establish a trust fund for him in the amount of $100,000. Mm -hmm. Quite a substantial sum. Proceed. Your Honor, in contrast to the refinements of the Mason social strata, what do we find? A horse doctor, associating with common, loose living people. No, no, I have judged, Your Honor. Sustained, Joe. I've always found his associates most uh, reputable myself. I'm his neighbor. I'm one of them. Oh, but uh, I met his former racetrack friends. You, you see, Your Honor, my point is that Mr. Kane here is, well, he's merely a racetrack follower eking out a precarious living, taking this boy and dragging him around all over the country when he should properly be in school, getting the type of education to which he's entitled. And worst of all, Your Honor, this child's being denied the greatest influence in any boy's life, a woman's care. And so, Your Honor, before his young life is completely wrecked, I respectfully ask that the custody of this child be given my clients. I arrest my kids. Your Honor, I could make a long, flowery speech, but I propose to stick to plain facts. That's fine. Go ahead, Joe. First, to prove that my client is no longer eking out a precarious living, I submit this contract. It is an agreement whereby Mr. Kane becomes a trainer of all the horses owned by the Southern Breeding Club at a salary of uh, $10,000 per year. May I see that, Your Honor? Why, certainly, Mr. Travers. It's just a waste of time. I assure you it's genuine. It's signed by me as president of the Breeding Club. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. It's all right. Go ahead, Joe. In regards to the greatest influence in a boy's life, a woman's care, I submit this. This is a certificate of marriage, uh, dated this morning, and bearing the names of James Montgomery Kane, and Carol Virginia Carr. May I see that, Your Honor? Certainly, Mr. Travers. I assure you it's perfectly legal. I know because I perform this ceremony myself. Boy, a lot of things have happened in two days. I certainly have, Mr. Mason. Sit down a minute, will you, Joe? Danny, come in. Yes, sir? Seems to me like you ought to have something to say about all this. What do you think? Well, I, I don't know, Judge. I love my grandma and grandpa very much. Honest, I do, Grandma. But I... My Uncle Jim and I are pals, and... I'd be sort of lost without him. And he's got Carol and everything. And that makes things a little different. And well, I guess, mind if I figure things out a little bit, Judge? Why, no, Danny. Go right ahead. I'd be an awful lot of trouble, Grandma. Honest, I would. No, you wouldn't, dear. Oh, yes, I would. You don't know me. And so I guess I'd better stay with my Uncle Jim and Carol. 
don't feel bad. Is that all right with you, Judge? Sure, Danny. I couldn't have done better myself. And that's a decision of the court. Court's adjourned. Ha, 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 ha.